Hello, my name is Rose Bryson, and welcome to this tutorial on taking landmarks for morphometric research in the 3D Slicer application. Today we'll be covering how to take single landmarks, but future videos will explain how to capture open and closed semi-landmark curves. So our volume and our model are already loaded into Slicer, so we can begin. First, we'll customize our workspace. So by clicking that push pin and then the I symbol, you can remove the 3D cube and the axis labels surrounding your model. This isn't necessary, but it might help with visualization. Another option is switching from perspective view to orthographic. Again, this is just based on your preference, but then we can click the push pin again, click the target symbol to center your model in that 3D space, and then we'll zoom in. You can change the view of your workstation by clicking this button at the top of your screen which gives you a series of options on how to organize your windows. So for landmarking, it might be helpful at points to use this 3D only option, but there are a couple benefits to being able to see the slices of your volume while you landmark, and we'll go over those in this video. So I usually just use conventional mode. I find it really useful to take my landmarks in the volume rendering mode instead of on this model. So I'm gonna to navigate to my model module using either my customized shortcut at the top or this drop down menu. And I'm going to switch off the visibility of my model by clicking this eye symbol. Then I'm going to navigate to my volume rendering module by again either clicking the shortcut or using the drop down menu. Now I need to turn on the visibility of my model and double check that my volume is selected. And then we'll use that shift bar to isolate the material that I want to place landmarks in. In this case, it's a primate skull. Now we can see the fine details of foramina and sutures that weren't as clear on the model. And this is really going to help us place our landmarks more precisely. We'll take our actual landmarks in the markups module, but before you place a point, you want to rotate your model into the position that's best for whatever you're taking specific points of. So remember, you can also adjust those windows as you like. I'm going to be putting points down on Bregma and Lambda, so I'm rotating the model to visualize the top of the skull. And now I'm going to navigate to my markups module. And there are two ways of placing fiducial points, by using this shortcut or these buttons on the left side menu. By selecting persistent and then fiducial, you can continuously place points with every click of your mouse. So before I place my first point, I'm going to right click or double click on this node that I've created and rename it as trial one of my study. And now you can see the text accompanying my point says trial one dash one, meaning it's my first landmark. So I'm going to roughly place a landmark at Bregma and Lambda. And remember, you can adjust these points after you place them. But notice how the color has changed from green to pink once the point has been placed. Once you're done placing fiducial points, there are three ways to get out of this persistent fiducial mode. You can click this symbol. And notice when I click now, I'm not putting down any new fiducial points. Um, and then when I click fiducial again, it's going to say trial 1-3. So I'm ready to take my third landmark in this group that we call a node. You can also right click to get out of this mode or hold down control and click your trackpad. Now in our left side menu, we can see the node we created. And if we open the control points drop down menu, we can see the landmarks we just took and the XYZ coordinates for each of these points. Since we exited from persistent mode, we can now click our model and move it without taking points. So I'm going to move the model to a different area of the skull arrange it in the way that's best for taking our next points, and then click back into our persistent fiducial mode. So notice that the new points I'm putting down, say trial 1-4, 1-5, etc., because we're still under the same node that we created, I'm just continuing that list. So I'm going to exit out of active landmarking mode now, and I'm going to switch the appearance of the screen to a light background just so we can visualize this a little better. And now open the display drop down menu. Here we have a bunch of options for adjusting the settings of our fiducial points. So one of these settings is the glyph size, which changes the size of your fiducial point on your model. So watch the model as I move this bar 
you can see those fiducial points getting larger and then smaller. You can also adjust the text size and change the opacity of the points themselves. If I open the advanced drop down menu, we have even more options to customize our markup's appearance. You can change the color of the selected or placed landmarks and the unselected or not yet placed landmarks. You can see the it defaults my unselected landmarks uh, to be set to green, but when I place them on the model, I'll just put one over here, they're going to change to pink because that's what I've set it to. Another feature, if you scroll down, lets you change the font of your text. So I'm going to go back up and increase the size of our text so we can see it better. And you can also make your font bold or italic. All these things are just good to keep in mind if you're trying to really customize a model for, say, publication photos. You can also change the opacity of the background to your text and adjust the color by selecting any options you'd like. You can also change the shape of your glyph, your landmark itself. So right now we have it set to 3D spheres, but you can customize it however you'd like. So I'm going to reverse the changes we've made so far. And just move our model into position here. Before we save our landmark data that we collected, I want to show you three tips that might help you with your landmarking process. So the first is if you hover over a landmark that you've already placed so that it glows green and you click it, your perspective slices below will all jump to the place where that landmark is. So here I'll show you one more time with a different landmark. And this can be useful for a couple reasons. You can use those slices to more accurately move the landmark to the right anatomical place in 2D. And you can also make sure that the landmark is sitting right on top of the bone surface by zooming in and making sure that it hasn't fallen into a foramina or an unfused suture opening. The second tip is for when you're collecting landmarks inside a skull. So we're going to navigate to our volume rendering module and toggle on the visibility of our region of interest by clicking this display ROI button. So on each side of this cube, there's a small colored sphere that when you click and drag, it's going to take away part of your volume on that side of the cube. So this can be really helpful for taking endocranial landmarks, because as you can see, when I turn our model, I now have access to the inside of the skull and can place landmarks in there as well. And you can also do this in 2D space in your slices below. If your ROI box is turned on, then you can adjust it in the slices below as well. So the last tip I'm going to show you today before we learn how to save our landmarks is in the markups module. So I'm going to turn off my display ROI and navigate there. Under the control point drop down menu, you can use this lock feature to freeze your points on your model. So this is a really helpful feature so that you don't accidentally grab one of your landmarks and move them when you don't mean to. So normally, if you hadn't locked your points, you'd be able to adjust them by just clicking and dragging. But here I'm going to unlock them now and move that point. It's going to turn green, and now we're able to move them again. Now I'll lock it, and I'll be unable to move them. You can also lock individual points, whatever is most helpful for your workflow. And finally, our last step is just going to be to save our landmark data that we've collected. So I'm going to click on the Save icon. And you can either save your whole project in a medical reality bundle by clicking this icon. Or you can select just your landmark data which is here under the name we assigned it, Trial 1. And make sure you select Markups Fiducial CSV file format and click Save. Ignore this warning if it pops up for you. And make sure that you're saving to the directory that you'd like your file to end up in. And then click Save. 
And that'll complete our tutorial on basic landmarking in 3D Slicer. So thank you so much to the 3D Slicer team for making this awesome software free for everyone to use. And subscribe below for more workflow tutorials from our lab. Thank you.